of the CPDC to order. Um, Just make sure you've all signed in, uh, especially if you choose to speak, so we get your name correctly. And if you do choose to speak, um, please state your name and address so we can enter that into the record as well and address all of your questions to the board. First order of business is a public hearing for a definitive subdivision plan at 135-139 Howard Street. I'll read this public notice. Notice is hereby given that pursuant to MGL Chapter 41, Section 81T and Section 6.2.1 of the Reading Subdivision Regulations, Community Planning and Development Commission, CPDC, will hold a public hearing on Monday, February 11th at 7.30 p.m., in the Selectman's Meeting Room at Reading Town Hall, 16 Lowell Street, to consider the application for a six-lot definitive subdivision submitted by Infrastructure Holdings, LLC, for land located at 135, 139, and 149 R, Howard Street, Assessor's Map, lot, Assessor's Map 10, Lots 75, 76, and 77 in Reading, Massachusetts. A copy of the application and associated plans are available to the public in the Public Services Department in Town Hall on Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday from 7.30 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. and on Tuesday from 7.30 a.m. to 7 p.m. and on the town website the Thursday prior to the meeting. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, we have someone here for the applicant. My name is Andy Street. I'm a civil design consultant here on behalf of the Applying Infrastructure Holdings LLC and Kevin Greenwood, who is representing them tonight. Uh, as mentioned, we're here for the, the proposed subdivision at 135, 139, 149 R. Howard Street. These are tax maps. Uh, tax map 10, lot 75, 76, and 77. Which is the entire parcel being located in the S15 zoning district. Um, just before I get going, we've, we've uh, had a number of meetings about this already. Uh, there's a preliminary meeting with the uh, planning staff and the engineer that was back in November to start talking about how this project takes shape. Um, since then, we've had a DRT that was uh, in mid-January. We uh, met with conservation already that was in, uh, towards the end of January, and we'll be before them again Wednesday. So that process is moving as well. There's certainly considerations for that here uh, in addition to a planning board process. Um, so the entire parcel, all three combined, is a little over four acres, about 4.1 acres. Um, the three combined, again, have 110 feet of frontage on Howard Street. The site is um, relatively gentle slopes. There's a wetland system in the back here that was flagged by Norse, in, uh, Norse Environmental in, in August of 2018. Um, the remainder of the site, some grass, some woods. There's two single-family homes down towards the front on Howard Street, each with their own curb cut and onto Howard Street. Uh, the abutters is primarily, well, entirely of, of single-family homes along Milton and West Rock to the top here, and then some right along the, um, this side of the property line over here as well. Can you switch to C4, uh, C I think, down to the next one? So the proposal is to take these uh, this four acres and subdivide it into six single-family house lots. Um, these houses will be accessed uh, by a more than approximately 350-foot roadway, which connects down on Howard Street and pitches down towards the rear of the parcel there. So the whole road uh, slopes at 1% all the way to the back. The road itself is 24 feet wide with a 45-foot paved cul-de-sac radius at the end um, with a we have a 60-foot wide, uh, no, I'm sorry, a 50-foot wide right-of-way and a 60-foot radius cul-de-sac, um, which will contain the pavement there. So all six homes will have driveways that come off of the, uh, the proposed roadway. Um, there's adequate sight distance on Howard Street. You can look both ways. Vertical grand curbing all the way around. Trees will be provided in accordance with the regulations, working with the tree warden to make sure they're appropriately selected and planted. Um, 
the from a traffic perspective, we're talking about the addition really of four single family homes when you start with two and we're adding six. So we got about four new homes, so it's a fairly minimal traffic impact. Um, so each of these will be we did test bits out there, groundwater is high. Um, so we're proposing drive under garages for the first four here, and then two of them will have more of a crawl space. But things need to get elevated a little bit, which has impacts on utilities, which I'll talk about next year. But we've done test bits for stormwater purposes uh, and found that high groundwater, which, which has been part of the design constraints that we're presenting tonight. Um, from a utilities perspective, everything can end Howard Street. We have a sewer main in Howard Street that, that ties into here. The four lots in the back will be force mains, and the two front lots will be will be a gravity system there. But the force mains, again, being a product of the, um, the the site itself is a high sewer in Howard Street, so we tried to keep everything as, as low as we could, um, and as a result of that, we have force mains to, to connect the four, four lots in the back here. From a stormwater perspective, can you go to the next sheet mm -hmm. for me, please? From a stormwater perspective, again, we dug test pits to, to find some soil characteristics as well as groundwater. Um, the entire roadway pitches towards the rear of the site, the homes, uh, proposed homes and driveways largely pitch in towards the roadway. There's a break in the curb at the top of the cul-de-sac where all the stormwater flows through a swale and to a uh, infiltration basin to the rear there. Um, we designed the, the stormwater systems for the local regulations, for the DEP regulations. Certainly a topic at the Conservation Commission as well. Um, all with the goal of trying to capture, treat, infiltrate as much as we can and maintain the peak flows um, leaving the site. And we're well aware that there's flooding concerns in the neighborhood from, from a lot of the neighbors. Um, but what we've done is, is not necessarily work to uh, improve that situation, but match current conditions to what it is today, which is the goal of these regulations. So we're not increasing peak flows. Everything ultimately, if anything, this yard is one that winds up more from the site, it winds up into that wetland system as it currently does today. Um, now we are requesting a handful of waivers here. Um, none of these waivers are, I guess you could say a matter of convenience. They're either from discussions with the town or um, like the sewer is a, is a product of the, the uh, site itself. So waiver number one is uh, requesting a limited traffic study. Um, regulations on a full study, we, we feel that given the relatively low um, traffic impact and the relatively small number of units that a full study isn't necessary. Um, we're requesting to reduce the roadway paved width from 30 feet down to 24. Again, with the relatively small uh, subdivision that we're proposing, I would think 24 is, a, is an appropriate roadway width. Waiver number three, um, similar to the roadway, we're requesting a, a 50 foot right of way instead of a 60 foot. Um, this was really a product of discussions in that preliminary meeting um, with, with some members of the, the town staff. We think that's appropriate here. Um, we did do a proof plan, which was later submitted. It wasn't in the uh, original package, um, but we did do a plan that shows uh, this works, we can get conforming lots with the 60 foot right of way. So it's not something we need, but I think it's just a better layout for the town. It's ultimately, this work would be accepted. Um, we have waiver number four. Uh, we're not proposing a landscape island in the center of the cul de sac for the regulations. Uh, some of the feedback we've received is these are. Um, Maintenance challenges, snow plowing, maintaining the landscaped areas, so we're not we're not showing it here. We're also not proposing any sidewalks around around the uh, new roadway. Um, there's none on Howard Street today. I think uh, there's a lot of trees, utility poles, things like that along Howard Street. So I think installing them in the future would be a challenge as well. So in consistent, uh, staying consistent with the neighborhood, we're not showing the sidewalks uh, for this roadway either. Um, and then from a utility perspective, uh, given the height of the sewer in Howard and where we have to tie in, we're proposing that the water main is, is a deeper elevation than the sewer main, which is, is something that's called out in the regulations, that water should be higher than all the other utilities, um, which isn't the case here, just again, with the product of the existing utilities. And then similarly, the water main is not looped. We have a 350-foot run here with no um, 
feasible way to connect to either Milton or West Croft. Um, we're surrounded by single family homes. So making a loop isn't, isn't feasible, so we're requesting a waiver for that. And then the force main itself is, is the last waiver we are uh, requesting. So I think that, that sums up the project. I mean, with, this is all, these are all conforming lots. We meet the, all the zoning, uh, all the lot sizes, dimensions, setbacks, all that. It's, it's all, it's a by right subdivision, more or less. I mean, we meet all the standards that are, that are required for the subdivision regulations. Um, we believe we've met the DEP standards as well. I know that's not the purview here, but we're working through that with conservation. And then it's, it's in the scheme of things, relatively low impact. Um, in terms of traffic and sewer and water, things like that, it's not a, not a huge impact. And then when you look at the, the neighboring lots and the character, I think we, we fit in uh, relatively well with what, what is currently in this area today. So with that, I'm certainly happy to answer any questions that the board may have. Thank you. Thanks. Um, questions from the board? <coughs> Have anything to add to that? Hmm. We've received some feedback from the town engineer and the conservation agent um, and the fire lieutenant. Um, and so the applicant has seen this feedback, and um, there's a few things that need to be worked out. Well, a lot of stuff. Like a lot of there's a lot of people. <laughs> And that's the latest we got from engineering, right? This yeah, and it was it was like kind of late in the day on Thursday that you received that, mm -hmm. one, right? Yeah. So we didn't have a lot of time to like absorb it before tonight. Sure. And if I may, we've read through it, and, and we don't see anything there that isn't isn't really. A lot of that is adding some notes and, and things like that to the plan. Uh, but we'll certainly there will be, of course, be another submission here. So we'll we'll work to address those as uh, as we move forward. Sure. <coughs> Uh, and I guess the first thing that stands out to me, you said you have a meeting with conservation on Wednesday. Is that right? We're on the agenda, yeah. Yeah, we're on the agenda. Um, just questions about the wetland line and, and yeah. well, project in general. Yeah. That's the big piece, I guess. Um, he's suggesting that you need to remap, remark out that border in, uh, in the spring. Is that what it is? Sorry, I was trying to find it again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. I thought I read that in here. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. You wanted that outlined again. So what if that grows significantly to the point where that to lose that lot? Well that's it that's need to see what's happening with that, so right? I, I guess the way I kind of see this progressing is we open this with you, we get some feedback from this board. Um, <coughs> we certainly have an ongoing process with conservation which we'll have a better handle on after Wednesday. Um, and then we can assess how um, how we move forward um, with both. But we wanted to kind of push these both both hearings at the same time okay. forward to try and that's you know, minimize submissions and, and, and things like that to try and address as many comments as we can at once. So that's that's a big one there, making sure that right. that um, outline is correct. And then seemed to be some disagreement about whether the test pits were acceptable or at least the findings in the test pits were acceptable. Are you talking about conservation again? Conservation. Yeah, so, so the biggest the biggest concern from conservation, I, mean, I don't want to put words in their mouth, but one of the biggest concerns that they had is there's a, a man-made ditch that runs, uh, not funny, but it runs along perpendicular to Howard Street, more or less. Um, we had a wetland scientist review it, and uh, her opinion that it's not a, a jurisdictional wetland. Um, the Conservation Commission has walked the site, and um, it, based on this, there seems to be some disagreement on that delineation, um, and that's what we anticipate the majority of, of the Wednesday meeting discussing. Um, whether we can reach a resolution at that meeting or we determine a path forward, I think that's why we're going to go Wednesday to see how that goes. But certainly there's impacts there on, on this project as a whole that doesn't become jurisdictional, um, in which case we need to evaluate how it affects what this board uh, sees and, and uh, reviews and also the conservation does. I'm uh, curious because immediately to the, I guess it's to the east of the project is those two extreme pork chop lots in the access to that, which is on the ground, it's identified as a private way, but it's uh, in the plan, it's uh, two different owners. And have you um, touched base with the those of butters to make sure that the um, change is, is acceptable? 
So our property ends here, the thicker dark line. So that's all off of our property, and we're not proposing any changes to these parcels on the side. So we, this this subject parcels from here. Well, I understand it's not on your property, but it's certainly next door, and sure. very close to being next door. Um, and it's it's not a street. Uh, it's probably not even a legal driveway, uh, according to the town standards. So this might be an opportunity to uh, improve the circumstances. Sure, we're, no, we're not taking questions just yet. We'll be there. Hi. Hi. We'll open it to comments in just a second. Let's just get some questions out. You'll be first. Thank you. Okay. I, I guess I'm not sure where you're going with that one. Well, the it's a very well done plan. It's a nice uh, street layout, and right next to it is something which is you know, right out of the backwoods. So it's... <laughs> Yeah, you know, our, our intent is to maintain the, you know, we show it, you know, to maintain the vegetation along that property line as much as we can. Uh, we don't, we're not grading right up to the property line, so the intent of this plan is to leave that as it is. It's not okay. ours to control. Yeah. So you're going to hold the grade at that line and drain everything in, in towards the street? There's a, there seems to be a low point um, where lots five and four come together, right? Yeah, so yeah. at uh, one o'clock right there, yeah, that line. Yeah, so we are... So, so water will be pushed to the extension block. There were 164 condo here and a 160, so the idea is that it comes to the, to the extension. And if you look at the existing contours on C2, there's overlays. I guess your intention is not to change the drainage pattern along that eastern edge. Correct. But I don't know you're doing that. Because that spoke, spoke the property line between four and five, right? Yeah, the right side of that spoke where it hits the property line looks like the lowest point on the lot. Mm -hmm. Looks like it's a 160. Yeah, yeah it looks like it's about 160, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the idea is water is just coming around to the detention line. Without changing the grades? Well, well the grades will change. What I'm, what I'm saying is this, this this bubble line is the tree line that we're trying to maintain. So the edge of where we're working is on this side of the park. Okay. I'm in reference to his comment about yep, the, yep. the uh, yeah. width. That, now you, but you mentioned that those top two lots have to be raised up, right? Correct. Bring those up. So. Correct. Are those two foot contours I'm looking at? These so are one foot contours. One foot contours, yes. so it's uh, five feet higher than that? This is correct. This is a 164 contour down to a 164. Okay. If it's helpful, we can certainly add some additional spot grades and <coughs> clarification on how that, how that functions, particularly over there, that's beneficial to each other. Well, I'll have some additional comments, but what else does the board have any other comments, questions? I was wondering about the setback for the house on lot three from the property line. Yeah. Three. Yep. Yeah. What's the setback? That corner right there? From the western side? Right. 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 Right.
fits the scale of 35 feet, maybe? Yeah, I mean, it, it, it complies, if that's, if that's the question. And this, yeah. those, those houses, too, I mean, those are um, sample footprints. I mean, the intent here is to build custom <coughs> homes to fit each lot. So um, what we're trying to show is that house fits is really what we're trying to show. I mean, that's a, it's a 30 by 60 home, and it's a left hand over there. Probably won't what winds up being constructed. Uh, but showing that we can fit a house on each lot. Are you required to show more detailed house plans for the Conservation Commission for those two lots? So that has been discussed. Yeah. Um, it, it puts um, in a little bit of a spot because his preference would be to work with a uh, homeowner and determine what the house would be. So we're trying to figure out how to balance that the best we can. Which is tough when you're talking about half foot contour issues here across a lot of the site. Um, um, that's going to be a challenge to get there without having what sort of will be more specificity. Elevations. Yeah. The intent here is to establish elevations and show a house works, so those elevations will be held. Uh, but if the house is, yeah, I see what you're saying. If yeah. there's a jog in the back or something right. like that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Or if somebody wants to move a driveway, for example, closer to the wetlands, they want it on the right side rather than on sure. the left. It, there'll be a limitation if you're to, to spec, I'm sorry. that would be right. there'll be a limitation to how customized you can get, but the idea is to allow each lot owner to have a little bit of flexibility in the design. Certainly in these rear ones where conservation is involved, I mean it's gonna be much more limited. Uh, but but again, you know, the intent here is to show the fits and uh, the general grading patterns that regardless of what the house will be will have to be maintained is, is the intent here. So looking at the engineering um, division's memo, it looks like there's, I'm going to say, as much concern um, as the conservation uh, uh, administrator had that the engineering um, division has on the, just the stormwater design, not necessarily the wetland piece, but the stormwater design. Um, so I'm looking at his third <coughs> bullet and all those sub bullets in there. There's a, a lot of um, additional detail that, that is because you're right at that cusp sure. um, of this working really needs to get ironed out. Um, so yeah, between so. those two things, there could be a lot of changes as you work through here, I guess is, is my conclusion of looking at these two memos. Yeah, I, 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 there's certainly a handful of bullets here. I, I do view a lot of this as almost providing more information on what we have. To, to be honest, is it, I've, I've gone a lot worse, I guess, I'll put it that way from <laughs> other projects. But I, I, a lot of this is providing more information, more detail, make it clear what we're, what we're trying to accomplish. But I, I most all of what I see here is like confident we can, we can work really good. Yeah. Can I ask a question? So yeah. I'm sorry, I missed the DRT on this. Um, so you mentioned that you want to maintain um, pre-development flows. Is is there anything that you could do to actually improve the situation? Well, we do reduce. You know, we can only control water that is on the property, of course. Right. Um, when we look at our design points, you know, there's not a lot of flow in general. This is mm -hmm. kind of the challenging we're talking about. I'm looking at our peak flows now. I mean, 100 a year, we're talking about 1.2 cubic feet per second, and then the 10-year is 0.1. You know, there's not a lot of room to really make a lot of changes. But we do go from 0.1 to 0 and 0.5 to 0.3. You know, so we we take some steps to make some reductions <coughs> in, in, the, in the peak flows. Um, at, at each of the design points, really, we've got three different design points we're looking at. Uh, yeah, so we've, we've taken that into account and we've tried to reduce them as much as possible. What do you mean by as much as possible? I was actually interested in finding out whether you could add some more capacity to the system to try and alleviate some of the problems on the edges. I mean, for the privilege of building this, you know, can you fix some of the problems we're having on the edge? Well, I think the, the pond is is pretty close to being 
as big as we can make it. I mean, we have between the high ground water and the area we've got there, it's, it's pretty well maxed out. I mean, we, the, 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 the DP and the requirements are to match or reduce, um, which is what, we, what we've done. I think, I think we're getting pretty tight about pro providing additional storm water controls um, to keep reducing those peak flows. What about some like interim rain gardens? Yeah, or we've, we've like got nothing really. We're not really doing anything but sending it off to the pond. Right. Like you're not capturing it in the roadway somehow and slowing it down and letting it infiltrate and then get to the pond. Yeah, well, we've tried. You know, we've tried to do more of a low impact design. We're, we're no, no uh, structures, you know, no pipes, nothing like that. Trying to maintain the grass look as much as we possibly can, as opposed to more infrastructure that the town would own. We thought that was kind of blending. The, the needs of the stormwater management handbook and you know, what the town were to be accepted ultimately we need to own and maintain. Uh, we, we can certainly continue to look at it, absolutely, uh, and see if, there's, see if there's more room to, to make some tweaks. I think the groundwater is really a challenge. I mean, we're trying to, to minimize the impact of what this road, you know, it's a balance between keeping the road as you know, it's a one percent slope as it is, and, and not far down is groundwater. So we talk about putting systems under the road. You know, we just don't have the room between the road and where groundwater is to infiltrate and things like that. So it's kind of this balancing act of, of uh, trying to make this fit with the site as best we can, <coughs> and then also meeting our uh, our requirements from a, from a stormwater perspective. But we'll certainly keep considering. Yeah, we can look at that absolutely. Can you look at like additional soft measures we do? throughout the site? Can, we can look at that, yeah, yeah. Uh, I guess the only other thing that I see is on the fire marshal is asking for, about the width of the roadway at 24 feet, not providing the 20 foot unobstructed access if there's parking on the roadway. Yes, yeah, so I, I don't know how the town usually handles parking in a situation like this. I mean, is it, it's, um, I mean, Howard Street is not all that wide in its own right. I believe you can park into the side of that, I believe. Um, you know, if no parking has to be no parking, then that's... Yeah. I don't know. What's a concern? Yeah, yeah raised, so we, we, we can certainly reach out to the fire department. We've been talking about their concerns and, and see what we can do. Uh, Um, any other comments or questions from the board? Um, yeah, the uh, lot three, the entire house, uh, the proposed house, is inside the 100 foot uh, boundary. Correct. Did you do a uh, straw man plan with, without lot three? For example, reduce it to five houses. Um, to take care of, or basically to, to reduce the um, impact in that in that corner of the, the property. We actually had, I believe we had seven before the test base, to be honest. So, take a few more minutes. I knew that would go over. Where are you going to get seven? Where are you going to get one? Uh, so, um, one's a boat. You know, it's a balance of, well, I mean, I understand the economics of the whole sure, situation, right. but the, from the uh, engineering and the uh, conservation point of view, the uh, reducing it to the f uh, five house subdivision uh, would result in a much better uh, plan, if you will. Yeah, I mean, you know, again, again all, all the lots are, are what the zoning is asked for. You know, that's what we tried to achieve with this. We were, we were provided the lot size and frontage and all that and hit those marks. And the lots are oversized by what we, we could provide. Um, I get what you're saying about the, the buffer, um, but I, I, I don't know. I, I can certainly talk to my client, but, but you know, the idea here was working with what the regulations gave us. And, you know, these are, I don't have the area figures, but they're, they're substantially I larger. I don't see how you could get seven and still have all the upland. Was the cold sack paved? Yeah, this, this was um, this was early on. It might even be before weather flag. They might not have been seeking, like, wait, they might have had more of a layout. I don't know. Just a guess. <coughs> Any 
Yeah, I mean, getting rid of Lot 3 would let you use that for uh, retention. Well, and you could push the uh, Lot 2 house further, further back. And again, is not the site itself is not generating large amounts of storm water. It's uh, it's woods and grass, and it's, it's not in the hundred year storm. We're talking about a touch over one CFS that is going to that mm -hmm. one in the back. Um, well, every bit helps, from what I understand, in this neighborhood for sure. But it's not. This isn't a huge uh, flow generator in the, uh, in the scheme. Of things. I think, I mean, it's all wooded now, so there's infiltration. Sure. And, and that, that's what we tried to scale. replicate with that pond. In the back. I, I'm just saying, you know, we can, we will work to reduce it as much as we can. I'm just saying that we're not starting with a high number to, to work back on. That's all I'm saying. Okay. Okay. Let's get some public comments. We'll start in the back. Hi. Like there's some sort of uh, structure in the, in the north east corner, TOS one and FES five. Yeah, so these the, these are our stormwater <coughs> controls. Yeah, that's the emergency overflow. And are those owned, owned, or will those be property owned? This would be an easement would, would be provided to the town to uh, so maintain the pond and all the systems. Uh, where is it? Where is it? This is the stormwater pond here uh -huh. that we're proposing. Yep. And these structures are what controls water that comes from. And where is the easement for the town? The easement would go more or less through here. More or less, or? or we have a plan. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The lines on the plan, this means as I'm pointing it, oh, okay. the it's lines on the, on the plan point. to show it. Yeah, yeah. There, yeah. so this, this shaded area, area here. Shaded area. The town has access from the new road. The town would have access from the new roadway to get to those structures. And I'm happy to explain anything else that has been brought up if you'd like. Sure. Um, the waivers, so waiver number two is a reduction in the right of way width of 60 feet. The, the town's regulations for subdivisions are antiquated at best, and so it requires, if you scroll up a little bit, or actually go to the proof plan probably. Let's go look for it. Yeah. Yeah. So the basis for these developments is a 60 foot wide right of way. And then I think um, it's a 36, 30 foot paved area, is that what it is? I think so, 30 foot. Is that a spring actually, but maybe it's 30? 30, right. Um, so the old regulations require this big, wide roadway, mm -hmm. which is just more paved area, which creates more water problems. And so we've been willing to reduce, to grant a waiver to make that narrower, to have more grassed area in these developments when 
when the rest of it's working, when the stormwater management is working. So that's that's what that particular set of waivers is for. Smaller right of way, smaller paved area. Okay. That, that's actually better for everyone because it's less pavement. It's less and, and what we have found is, you know, on developments that are that are this size, which is what is happening in Reading now, as opposed to what it used to happen in Reading, you know, where there's six houses, um, you, you don't need, you know, six house, uh, a cul-de-sac with, with six houses on it generally doesn't need a big, wide roadway to accommodate a lot of traffic because there's generally not a lot of traffic on those. Not so. as much as say a 12 house or a 15 house or a really long road. So if if someone did come in with a, one of those bigger subdiv <coughs> um, uh, subdivisions, we would be less, uh, we'd look at right. that a little bit um, differently because the need for a wider, um, wider roadway. Uh, eliminating the landscape cul-de-sac island, so in the bulb, uh, the rules call for a, a landscape island in the center of that. Once the town takes ownership of that roadway, that's a problem for plowing, it's a problem for the fire trucks to turn around in, it's a problem to maintain. And so, again, we've been, because we're reducing the paved area, we've been willing to listen to whether we could get rid of that island as well. Um, if for some reason we needed that extra landscaping to make the stormwater work, then we wouldn't waive it. <coughs> so that's yep. probably the only reason we wouldn't waive it. Um, the next waiver is about uh, street lighting. I guess they don't want to put any street lights in. We haven't we haven't discussed that one yet. Actually, we haven't discussed any of these waivers yet. I'm just reading them to you. So the board would have to vote on each of these. Um, there's a waiver for no sidewalks. I guess if you look at the landscape plan, you can see what that impact is. So whether we felt it was safer to have a sidewalk running up along it as opposed to, say, more less paved area. Uh, waiver seven is a sort of technical um, that the water main, but that is the, the pipe supplying the water to the development, is supposed to be higher than the sewer line. But because of the grades, they're proposing to reverse that uh, because uh, because why? Because water's under pressure and the uh, sewers falling that grade. But in, in this case, the sewer in Howard Street is is relatively high, so where we have to connect to the sewer is high. Um, which makes it almost practical, not feasible to get the right. The water is supposed to be a certain depth. And in order to do that, it, it just naturally is uh, uh, lower than the sewer because of how high the sewer is. Okay. So, so how do you alleviate that? I understand. If, it, if it's already, you're saying it's already higher than normal? I, I don't know if I'd say normal. Well, I don't know. I mean, I, yeah, no. I'm not an engineer. But yeah. you're you should address all your questions to the board. Yes, I'm sorry. Uh, if if it already is high and you add capacity to it, isn't that going to be a problem? Well, high in elevation. High as far as the pipe along the road, you mean? Yeah. The pipe. How far it sets in that in that? Okay. How far down it is underneath the roadway? All right. So we have so, a, we can show the cross section that shows the utilities sure. if that's helpful. Now, engineering has to review that and sign off on that as well. It's just a waiver that they yeah, request. Yeah. Well, the problem I have is this. my name is Ron Petrin. I live at 119 Howard Street. Now, my wife just ran off before I came to this meeting tonight. Uh, uh, this, which is kind of a, a, a snapshot of what that is, right? I can't see that. Oh, it's it's it's, it's that you know. Mm -hmm. All right. It looks like the. The problem is, I get here, the houses are, are, are located uh, skewed differently, which which I don't know how big the houses are. The houses that exist on that property, there are two. One is very small, uh, and uh, I always thought that you're concerned about water would be. Uh, you know how how it sheds now, now you're going to add some space all that space for six houses 
water isn't going to be able to go into the ground where, you know, because there wasn't anyone, any house there before. Do you know what I'm saying? Sure. Uh, so, I guess I had a question about, he must have the uh, petitioner or owner, or whatever you want to call him, uh, must have an idea of the size footprint for the homes that he wants to build. Sure, so I think what you've printed off there is the proof plan. And I don't know. My sure. wife read it a lot from me. It's okay. <laughs> uh, but it was, it was what was on uh, There's the, a lot more the town there. site. Mm -hmm. Let me explain to you what I think you, your first question was about the houses and that plan. So that plan goes back to what I was saying about the regulations being somewhat antiquated. They have to show that they can make the development work according to the rules in the in the plan. And yeah, that's what this written. shows, as written. And that's what the proof plan shows. So okay. it's like the maximum the maximum build you could probably do. They they then come back down from that. The other plans show the house locations and they're just showing a footprint, probably their maximum footprint, approximate, but they don't know exact shape of the house so that they can talk to conservation and talk to us about where the house is placed. They do an elaborate water infiltration analysis. They do a stormwater uh, engineering plan that engineering reviews and that's where they are right now. They haven't quite finalized that it's working or that it will work. How's that? They have to capture all that water. Yeah. They have to make it not flow off the site any worse than it's doing now. Okay. So what are you saying that, 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 that this is, I, I mean, you can have it, have it, but I mean, that, this, this area here, which is the, I'm going to call it the swamp area, okay? Sure. The swamp area looks much larger on, on the screen here than what it is here. And house number three looks much closer to that wet area than what, uh, than what it does on here, obviously. From just looking at it, all right? Uh, so, uh, so can I see that sheet for a second? I just want to make sure. Fact, everyone's not marked up. Yeah. So the reason that what you're seeing here in your printout is different than what you're seeing on the screen, well, right now it's the same as what's on the screen, um, but what's different than what they're proposing is because this is the proof plan that shows if they were to construct the subdivision to meet all of the town's requirements, this is how wide the road would be, how big the cul-de-sac would be, and where the lots would be. What they're actually doing is a little bit smaller, so there's room for the lots to spread out a little bit more, and so the house locations are yeah. are different. If you change the if you change the uh, the, the road width right. to some, the lots are going to be bigger, exactly. obviously. Right. Uh, and, and don't I mean, I mean where we have a real water problem in in this area. I mean West Groff, Howard Street, etc. Don't you have to kind of know what 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 size the houses are going to be? And, what the footprint is? Are they going to have? Are they going to have cellars? Or are they going to be slabs? Well, as, a, as a, the applicant explained, uh, the lower houses, the lower four houses, have basements, but the top two had crawl spaces, and they're all oh, crawl spaces. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So again, they they have to address the stormwater issues via engineering. They have and to show it, that it, it works. Is, the water table is high. Understood, but they have to show that that works and convince engineering that they, they're doing something that works. So, okay. it, it, and uh, right, based on comments that we have, and, and they they uh, are they understand that that uh, that hasn't been. There's more detail that needs to be provided for engineering to say, to, to uh, review it and either agree or disagree that, that their plan will not, um, will not cause um, greater harm, if that's the right term, but not increase the, the, the issues there. And, and that's the threshold that they, they need to meet. They don't necessarily need to solve the neighborhood's oh. water problems, but they can't 
make it worse. Right. Is that's the threshold? I, right. And what Nick was asking before is, can't you do something to help solve the issues? And I, that's what they said they were going to take a look and see if they can. But uh, um, you know, that's a that's a tall order. Right. Let me right. grab some more As questions. I'm sure out everyone there. in this room understands. Yes, ma'am. Hi, my name is Ann Burke. I live at 40 feet to the property line. I can't see where the um, road is right here, but if you look at the C4, C4, C4. more than 40 feet. So the minimum it could be is 15 feet. That's, that would be a side yard setback, and the minimum in this zoning district is 15. But that's not what they're right. But I'm just yes. being realistic. Yep. yep. Okay. If I may, Mr. Chairman. Sure. I don't know if you can see this from here, but these, these are the existing houses. You can see the gray boxes a little bit. Those are the proposed houses. So just give you a sense of what you yep. look at now. These are actually slightly set further back. Than what the house is. Okay. Just to give you a sense. I just have one more question. What is, is there a maximum square footage for each of these houses? Uh, not not for the houses, but they have to provide, uh, there's a maximum coverage for the lot, and then you have the setbacks, and so that kind of brings you back in. They're not going to be any larger than... 4,000 square feet? 4,000 square feet? Well, depends on how tall you go. Uh, it, average for Reading is what I would say. Probably. Well, I think you should be looking at the average of Howard Street. But there's a so the zoning but somebody could come and take your house you could knock your house down and build it up to what the maximum <laughs> so I'm just saying so that's how the zoning is written we don't say it's a maximum size house it's it's you have a setback and you have to stay within that and then you've got height limits and then you've got maximum coverage on the lot as well. So what's the maximum coverage on the lot? It's 15%, 15 in this, 15 so, in this zoning district, size. yeah. So 15% of 15,000? Exactly. That's the coverage now. Right. That's the footprint, right? So you can and stack can that up, up yeah. to the height that you're allowed. It's good questions, though. Yeah, definitely. Other questions? Yes, sir. Yeah, uh, I'm Aaliyah's father, Aaron Harrington, and I listened to a few things I heard Mr. Winston say. Yeah, I'm hearing with the other gentleman, I think I'm very good to see. It. And you have over a, so 60 percent of an acre between roadway, roofs, and riders that's collecting water. And like Mr. Weston said, the problem is wrong if it is what's there, and you don't want to make it worse. So. If you take 60% of an acre collecting water, it's concentrated quicker, if it's going down the road, there's a lot to be considered. The engineering has to really be figured out that they don't make it more water in the houses around it. And I know that my daughter hasn't heard 
So I like, tried. Like Nick said, I couldn't quite read your last name. Oh my God, it's not that good. The other rules you have to follow. So I think that water reason is, is huge. Uh, uh, how well that you know, take a lot here that the water's not going to go in the ground fast. And I realized that the house, you can't put the water on the house unless you raise the road up and put the drain down the street and connect it up to one of those. Uh, beside that gentleman's house, there's a way that water runs. They have to bring, to take the pool of water away from the road and actually help everybody. They put the drain in the street and ran it down on the street to the, uh, that area. This house is too high. I know where it is. I don't know all the numbers. But the water, I think, is the biggest issue here. Thank you. Yes. Uh, my name is Mark Wetzel. I live on um, 163 County Road. Um, I've been a resident of Reading for 39 years. So I'm very familiar with this neighborhood. I walked through the through there a couple of times a day. Um, and also I'm a registered professional engineer and I'm director of public works in the town of Air. So I'm used to reviewing plans and seeing what happens when they what the engineer says is going to happen and what actually does happen. Um, the engineer claims that we're not adding much more off to this site. When you look at it right now, it's all wooded with the exception of the houses in the front. And you're paving a road, paving driveways, you're building roofs. So it's obviously adding a lot more drainage. And in addition, all the drainage is sheep run off down into the uh, down the road to the end of the cul-de-sac. So, so the, the, the time that it travels is much quicker. Um, I'm concerned that they don't have any catch basins because catch basins do serve a purpose of removing sediments from, from the water before it gets to the to the, um, to the uh, four bay and the infiltration basin. Um, also, uh, between lots four and five on the swale there, it doesn't it doesn't show on there, but on the drainage plan. All that water is not running into the uh, infiltration basin. It's running into into the um, adjoining lot because uh, the elevations are lower than the top of the berm of the infiltration basin. Um, yeah. The overflow goes into the wetlands. The reason there's wetlands there is because this area doesn't drain. It's not going to infiltrate. It doesn't infiltrate. Um, I didn't see any kind of percolation tests or infiltration tests on the site. Um, how many people here have water in the basement? <laughs> <laughs> you walk down West uh, down West Park Road and you see all the sun pumps running. And um, if you notice that the house that they're building, the two houses closest to the wetlands, have raised slabs, that's because they would get water in the basement if they put them at the same level as all the houses on West Park. Um, I just don't see that this drainage system is going to work at all. Um, it's going to fill up, it's going to overflow, it's going to put more water into the water, which is then going to fill up the really fat guys in the basement. Um, I think the, you, you know, the, the engineer claimed that he could work out all these issues with the, with the town engineer. The town engineer says, engineering cannot approve the drainage design at this time and suggest the consultants meet to discuss. And then they list all their concerns. So the town engineer has the same concerns that I have. That there's not enough information here to really uh, evaluate the, the uh, drainage system. And, you know, there's 144 pages of the drainage report, which I'm not sure if anybody read it. I didn't get a chance to get under the foot of it because it didn't have uh, time to go through it. But you can make a drainage report, say what you want it to say. And especially when you have 144 pages with a lot of calculates get spit out of the computer. Um, so. I think the calculations show that it'll work, shows that there's not an increase in runoff. But to be realistic, there, there's going to be a lot more runoff and it's going to create a problem. Thank you. He's sending you all of the drainage reports from now on, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> If I may, I mean, sure. we've got very strict guidance on how to design our drain systems, which is what we've, we've held here to, to show that it works. Uh, I'm 
professional engineer myself, and I have stamped this and, and said that it works. I mean, I, it's we've done test pits to confirm where the groundwater is. We've used that those soils as part of our analysis and the classification of them, um, and used uh, DP standards and the town standards to, to design the spring system to capture the runoff and handle it appropriately. That, that's that's what we are um, bound to do, and that's what we need to do with, with projects like these are to get approved. So we'll meet with the engineer, certainly, um, talk about those concerns there, and uh, there's other detail that this board needs, we certainly are happy to, to provide. How are you dealing with solids? I'm sorry? How are you dealing with the solids removal? So sediment removals. The sediment will be collected in the four bay, and the four bay can be uh, can be cleaned. I mean, and some will be in the soil as well, but that those will be cleaned by the uh, by the town moving um, forward. Thanks. Thanks My name is Chuck Castellucci. I'm at 62 West Park Road, which is uh, right behind the Trinity Park. <coughs> As best as I could tell, I'm not a stormwater expert, but it, it looked to me like the, uh, the area that was blocked and about drained from all of the uh, plants, uh, the hardscape areas, roads and, and driveways, directed to this pond represents about, I think it's five times the normal amount of water that would infiltrate in that area. And to me, it's not necessarily a stormwater problem that we've got, it's a groundwater problem. When that stormwater reaches that basin, it's going to infiltrate the basin if it, it doesn't overflow it, and it's going to become groundwater. And that groundwater has got no place to go but low areas. And the low, unfortunately, the low areas are to the north and to the east. Uh, around the, uh, the infiltration pump. Anybody else? Yes. Uh, oh, Suzanne no. Algeria, I just have a question about the process. Uh, I know these two are running parallel, so conservation commission with this. So just hearing the number of concerns and the waivers and such, I just wonder moving forward how this process will work. I know a lot of us have already spent a lot of time with that last week's conservation hearing and here tonight and seeming like there will be future meetings to um, find out where we stand with this. So if you could clarify the process, that would be great. Sure. Um, mm. well, this, the Community Planning and Development Commission will keep their hearing open until con the Conservation Commission issues are out. That's how generally when we dual track these, that's how it works. Um, so you might be facing a number of meetings um, in the next couple months. So we we Ray, we don't um, we want to make sure before um, before we make a decision on this um, that all the conservation issues are worked out and can be worked out because if they can't then um, then it changes what the subdivision would look like um, you know um, so look like um, like David said maybe there needs to be you know maybe there can't be enough lot with the same number of lots or things need to be I mean, they, all those sorts of things need to change so we typically keep our public hearing open until those issues um, are resolved honestly so a lot of those issues need to be resolved before we can um, we can get a, a, f a firmer um, assessment from engineering on the stormwater um, issues um, we need all of those to be resolved before we can we can sort of move forward with this so it makes sense to to get um, because in a lot of subdivisions, there are issues that are um, that come up that are more than um, uh, stormwater or um, um, conservation issues. There's other issues that come up, and so moving them allows the applicant to work through all different issues, sort of at the same time. Um, this one, um, I right, the. the the biggest issue here is water um, in all its different forms. Um, although, right, there's there are other issues um, about the size of the homes and the location and the and all the road access and that sort of thing. Um, yeah. 
that. Agreed. Agreed. So there, it, it, and I, if I can say this, that um, you know, it's it's hard, to, it's hard to look at those sorts of issues when you have these other things that look like they may change the development um, um, or sort of deal with the bigger issues, and then you can get a better sense of what a house is going to be and how they're laid out, which will probably be in a, another public meeting. Thank you. So I actually have that question. Since the applicant has said that they want to leave it flexible for the housing, usually I thought our subdivisions, we have each of the house lots and the houses planned out. Definitive subdivision process does not require information about the actual houses. They're only required for conservation. Okay. So will there be a, another hearing for each of the houses as they finalize the plans, or is it just going to be the building permit once it's once no, the so plans come? And so there won't be a hearing with you guys for each individual plot plan. That will have to be provided to the building commissioner, who will run it by engineering to make sure that the drainage on each site works and is as was approved in your subdivision approval. Um, conservation might require another process for the houses that are in the resource areas, especially if more details of the houses are shown and they want to add um, a deck or you know push the house closer to the wetlands or something like that. Um, so that's why it's good for them to have the information up front. Mm -hmm. So if they get all the approvals right now from conservation, the future buyer wouldn't necessarily have to go back. Um, but okay. but they could. It, yes, exactly. All right. Great. Right. Yes, sir. Mr. Tuttle, uh, uh, you raised the question about the private road. The private road doesn't affect me. It, it, it affects Pat because she's uh, a partial woman that road. I no, no, I'm not. No, okay, sorry. <laughs> I, I, I'm lot 79 at Fisher Stewart, and I run adjacent to that private driveway. It's been, okay. I've been there for almost 54 years, and it's always been there, legitimate or not. It belonged to the house behind me, and mm -hmm. they, in turn, subdivided their, lot, their house and lot and built another house behind that. And then, since then, there's rule of worship between those two houses of that property. That's all I know about it. <laughs> So no, you can't. The, I noticed it because under the, the current zoning rules, uh, that would not be permitted. That doesn't mean that it's there's anything necessarily wrong with it. Yeah. But it's it might have been done before 1942 or, or whatever, which is when the, the zoning went into effect. But if you had an existing lot and you tried to split it like that, we would say no, because it doesn't meet the, uh, the current set of regulations. Okay. Anything else? Okay. Well, there's some work to do. Um, so we'll continue this. Um, what's the next? So the next meeting is March 11th. Um, Can we be ready for March 11th? Yeah. March 11th. Let's go to the engineers when we can. Seems like that's the biggest here yeah I would say after your conservation yeah, yeah you're probably right and that's probably the biggest driver here we'll see how Wednesday goes and certainly in touch as we work through that process as well so we'll put you on for March 11th and then you yeah. can back you can ask for continuance after that if you can't make it um, so 8 o'clock is the slot that we have Okay. Yes. Move that the CPDC continue the public hearing for the proposed uh, subdivision mm -hmm. on Howard Street until Monday, March 11th, 11th at, at 8 p.m. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Okay. This, that next meeting won't be noticed, so you can either keep track of the agendas or just remember that it's March 11th at 8 o'clock. You can always call um, staff if you want information or updates. <laughs>
So we had a request from 258, 262 Main Street for to continue their public hearing. So, right. so the next, um, including March 11th at 8:30. Move that the CPUC continue the public hearing for. Oh, uh, we have to keep it open. We have to. Uh, 258, 262 Main Street until Monday, March 11th at 8:30 p.m. Mm -hmm. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Okay, so if you were here for uh, 258, 262, that is continued until March 11th. Are you going to? All right, next up is sign permit application for 587 Main Street. The last time, is there somebody here for that? Are you here for that? Yes. You here for that too? Everyone's here. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so last time we had some questions about whether this is even allowed. Yeah, so I'm going to wait for Tony to come back since he was asking me some follow-up questions about it. Um, okay. Thank you, Tony. So, um, as noted at the last meeting, we have a definition um, for marijuana establishment that is, seems fairly broad, and it was unclear whether CBD is regulated as a marijuana product. Um, so I checked with town council, um, and they got back to me pretty quickly. Um, it's complicated, it's very complicated, but the bottom line is that um, 
marijuana products and products with less than 0.03% THC, such as CBD, um, are not regulated under Chapter 94G um, of the regulations. So we are allowed to have these types of products in town. We can regulate it at the local level if we want to. Um, and town council can help the town come up with a process to do that, but we don't have one that's right now. Yeah, we have, I mean, the National Food, Natural Food Exchange right, and the has a substantial uh, display of um, okay. you know, non-hallucinogenic hemp product. Right. I mean, the simplest, the CBD is, a, is technically uh, considered a hemp product rather right. than a marijuana product. It can be for marijuana, as I'm told, but that's a much more complicated process. And right. so, like, I mean, I'm sure these people can speak to this way better than I can. <laughs> I, I would be happy to. Um, so, yes, yeah, so um, the products that we sell, we're in a, a national franchise. There's 150 of us nationwide. And um, the CBD that we sell has literally zero THC. Uh, and it's pulled from industrial hemp. And it's categorized more as a very effective anti-inflammatory. And also it's categorized more as a vitamin or an aloe or a ginseng than it is a marijuana product. So as of right now, um, my understanding, and I don't have the exact laws, but uh, Governor Baker signed it into uh, legality in 2014, and President Trump signed it into federal legality at the end of 2018. Uh, so it's good there, it's good there, um, and it's basically an all-around health supplement at this point uh, is what we sell. So. And we have no intention on ever <coughs> morphing into anything that is yeah. uh, anything. Unless you're suitably permitted, yes, of course. Can you <laughs> say your name, sorry? Sure, my name is Brian Jakimzik. Great. I can spell that if you need. Yeah, that would be great. J-A-K-I-M-C-Z-Y-K. Yep. Great, thank you. Making sure that all of the letters of the alphabet are equally used. <laughs> oh, you're close. Well, we're only here for the sign, so. No L. No E. No E. Should we blow it up for you? Well, I noticed um, in the picture online <coughs> that the Ivana Sushi and the Louise's uh, awnings have the uh, lighter colored uh, valence. valence. But the, the proposal for the CBD sort didn't seem to have the, a corresponding thing. I think it would look better on the street uh, if, they, if they have that, uh, some sort of feature like that in common. I certainly uh, am open to that. Um, we can use different coloring, maybe a, a, light, a light blue background with a darker blue flower and gold lettering if it suits um, you know, to the area better, of course. I think that a darker awning is going to stay cleaner longer. I think that white one's going to get marked up pretty pretty bad. Sure. Um, but what's the material? Do we know? It, you know, it has to be opaque, right? It can't be yes. translucent. Uh, opaque. Opaque. That means not, no light goes through it. Yes. So <laughs> this is opaque. That's right. <laughs> Just you be wouldn't believe how often we run into this problem. <laughs> with our so signage. Often. So often. Okay, no light gets through it. None. Not even a little glow. <laughs> but yeah, I think a darker background would serve you better. We're actually thinking of going more towards a turquoise color versus the white. So that's some of the secondary colors they had proposed. We want to go with mm -hmm. this color. Yeah, I mean, there's no master signage plan on that building, right? No. But at least it would sort of match with the dark. And we'll, dark we'll, and light, we'll, dark we'll and match the, um, the stripe the as much as possible. Yeah. Okay. Um, do we have more detail than that? That are signing, or all the signage meets the size requirements? We had a size. We had so they give the, the dimensions and the logo corner. I think the other ones really gave. Do you have, did you bring your from, from last time? Yes. I think really gave the Yeah, so everything's the same dimensions in the corner here. The only already exists, we just want to recover it. Hmm? 
That treats us too, by the way. When it's in full bloom, you can't see your eye. Lights can be bright blue. <laughs> that can be whatever color you want. You won't see it. Unless the awning is over it, like the picture shows. Yeah. Cool. <coughs> Any other comments from the board? No. No, change of color looks like a good move. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right now, I believe you have an open sign. Yes. That flashes? Yes. Oh, we don't do that. Okay. Sorry. We don't allow flashing signs anywhere in town. It, will, yeah. it has a toggle on it. I'll make sure I toggle that. I'm sorry. Yeah. The okay. ones you see are illegal. Yes. Yeah. Don't get any ideas from anyone else. <laughs> <laughs> Check with our bylaw first. Everybody else is for certain. Yeah. We do a lot of sign enforcement in this town, so. Okay. Any other comments or questions? Do you want uh, a sample, or do you have samples? Of which? The product? Or the material, the color, or anything? Go free samples all day, every day. Um, <laughs> I can supply them. We don't usually, for awning signs, get a sample. We usually only for, like, if they're illuminated. Okay. Um, which right. is not okay. allowed. What's not allowed? Illuminated. Oh. Um, I'll wear it. Yeah, there's a street light. And there's, well... The other awning that looks like it's lit. Louise's looks like it has a yeah. end light over that pew. Yeah, so externally illuminated is allowed. But yeah, not that, that could be allowed, but right. we're not approving any lighting at this point. Right. Yeah, there's no lights under it. We don't plan on putting anything there. Alright. Okay. So I'm gonna take this from you that can work. Thank you, I guess. Do we want to indicate anything about colors here? Uh, white or teal background? Okay. Uh, we can remove okay, the white. Those. I would just, just change that findings where it says um, we'll have a white or teal background. Just white to teal. Green or brown letters and a multicolored logo and a lighter colored bottom valence to match the adjacent. Light, lighter colored bottom <coughs> valence. I don't think we have any words like that. Yeah, we don't. Well, a contrasting yeah. border. Similar to the adjacent awnings. Yeah. Is that my great Sure. Just cut all that. <laughs> okay. Anything else? A motion? Do you have to take public comment on this? Move that the CPDC approve the certificate of appropriateness for the, the sign proposal at 587 Main Street as amended. Second. All in favor? Opposed? Okay. Thanks. Okay. Um, Have a good evening. So we'll Thanks. contact you tomorrow about coming and get your sign permit. Perfect. Okay. Thank, <laughs> you. Thank, Thank you guys. What do you want me to stamp? Did you print one for him to stamp? I did not realize we needed to That's stamp okay. This. Just stamp that and then we'll attach this to it. I right. have to And we'll, we'll yeah. note that you can do it. Okay. All right. So next is uh, planning updates and other topics and a zoning discussion. Yeah. Is that what you guys are here for? Um, wow. Yeah. All right. Okay. Um, so should we do like the little things really quick? Um, so the Gould Street sample boards are that's good, gotten moved to next month. That's not happening tonight. Um, and the minutes are also getting moved to next month. Um, those are two small things. And then um, I've had a request from a um, trustee at Reading Woods to um, put up safety lighting. So. Actually, pull up the um, GIS yeah. to Reading Woods so I can show. Um, so they're having issues where the site parking lots are like really dark at night and people are falling, and um, they want to put some lights on the building to, to illuminate the parking <coughs> lots, which are by and large like internal to the site. Although there is um, one specific location where it the parking lot is like at the bottom um, and would like face the Curtis Street residence. Um, so, um, I 
issue. So basically, they want to put lights, like a couple lights on each building to illuminate the parking lots on Augustus Court. Um, and then I think their plan is to start with this building here and actually face them here as a pilot and see how it goes. And then if it looks okay um, and works okay, expand them to the rest of the buildings. Um, so I have a picture of the light and I want to just get your feedback on whether you want us to do a um, public process and notify um, everyone who lives there and the abutters just so that it's all out in the open or if you think it won't be super impactful and they can just go ahead and do it and they're open to obviously to whatever we decide on. Um, it is a floodlight although I'm told it will be very focused in LED and won't work as floodlight. Um, I don't know but that's true. <laughs> Either has a floodlight pattern or it doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't matter what the source is. Did they say what the color of the light was? White. I believe it's white. Well, it's soft white three or three different whites. There's yeah. a lot of whites. It's gonna be white light. It's probably gonna be like a street light. 18 watt LED floodlight. Well, the That's question that comes to mind is is where would they be mounted and right. aimed? I mean, if they're high on the building and aimed at the ground. You get a very different dispersion path. You get like a street lamp. Path. There might, there. I think there's some information on the first page about what their plan is with regards to that. Um, I mean, the uh, Curtis Street is um, notably higher than the elevation yes. of the. They have a uh, the Curtis Street residents have a fence along the back, and I'm told that the lights would be low enough that the, uh, mounted low enough that the, it, but they wouldn't shine over the lights. I don't know. I'm not sure how they can that do that's that. That's exactly true. It's when they do the test. Um, that really? I think that's what they're hoping for, but um, I'm not sure. That so this is me. <laughs> and this house has a spotlight at the peak of its roof right here, mm -hmm. lighting up its driveway, mm -hmm. and I can see it. Mm -hmm. And it's lighting up my whole neighbor. And this is all wood, by the way. It's like up here at the top of the peak, so 30 feet. Mm -hmm. yeah, clearly making a shot up there. Right. Probably the same size as that. Mm -hmm. So. So, I mean, it's my inclination to do a public process for this. Um, I think that's how people get this. Yeah, I think that's their plan. Is to do the so, would you want me to recommend they do it on that one building first and then come in here with some information for the public process? or? Yeah, I think it'd be good if they got the lights up on that building mm -hmm. only. Yeah. Only. Yep, right. That we could see it. People could go and look at it at night from any angle and figure out what it's really doing. Okay. Maybe we get out there before they mount them too to see what the difference is between the current and the next. Yeah, my house is under the hand up there. How's your neighbors? <laughs> so if they mount the lights and the board the doesn't like them, are we allowed to tell them to take them down? Yeah, yeah, like so. I'll when I reach back out to the trustee, I'll let her know if this is how it works. Unless they're mounted someplace else, you could take a look at the exact light, yeah, and see what its impact That's is on true. the surrounding area. I don't, I don't think that they have any, but but I'll ask okay. if they know of any other applications, yeah, yeah, in this area. Yeah. Um, I don't really care if they're lighting between those two buildings, frankly, because no one's going to see that. You know, that's like in the middle of the development. Right. So, well, I'm not certain whether the the houses on Summer Street will see it or not. Well, so what they're saying here is they plan on lighting up the front of the building. So in one place it says on the left side of the building to light up the corner of a sidewalk, but here they say and front of building on left side, and here they say light up the front of the building on the right side. So, you know, depending on, I, I mean, I guess that brings up a couple of things. One is um, um, there are residents, I mean, I, I, I assume that they are all, that it's all controlled by this same trustees, mm -hmm. but um, um, right. you're concerned with the people who live there. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. Right. There's two different ways this 
could go is one, or there's a lot of different ways it could go, but right, there's two, two ways to look at it is, is there could be impacting the people that are residents there and it could be impacting the people that are resident, right. the, the right. neighbors. Right. I think we need to get a yes. sense of really what it is they're planning on doing. Because yeah. neither this is, of <clears throat> This is written by the contractor too, so. You know, their their right. wording might not be. Uh, yeah, right. so that wording so is like different yeah. than what she was saying yeah. to me on the phone. Yeah. But right. it's good for us to at least vet this out. Yeah, let's and, and we have a process, yeah. and then yeah. it has to be public. I'll I'll drive through it tonight on the way home. See what's going on. Okay, so. Um, okay, Just thank you. Park in the back. See if the cops come. <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah, if we can get to the bump on South Street, we'll be fine. Yeah, the, to Tony's point, though, the um, South Street side has a really robust planting buffer that didn't okay. take on the... On the right, the Curtis Street side. side. Right. Okay. So the trees kept dying, and they went with some rhododendron and stuff. Like, they had to keep trying different planting. So we didn't get the full buffer on the left side. Then they put the fence up, I think. Or something like that. Okay. Yeah. So there, there's no poles on those parking. Um, they didn't I do guess any not. side light lighting. There's lighting up there. Yeah, there is. There's mm -hmm. lighting. Go for tonight. Let's see what that yeah. is. Right I'm gonna take pictures. Can I ask why we're um, why um, Ghoul Street's next month? Do they just not have it yet? Because they want to get it exactly right in there because they just need a little more okay, time. Okay, I just didn't know if stuff yeah. was sitting around. Um, yeah. Are they also meeting with the historical society, the historical commission? They did that already. They got their delay and release already. Um, yes, but about the materials. Um, Wednesday. I, oh, are they? I didn't know that, but thank yeah. you for that information. Um, yeah, I mean, I know the Historical Commission is meeting on Wednesday, so. Um, yeah, pretty sure. <laughs> Check the um, okay. That and zoning. Is up next. So I don't know if you had a chance to look at what I prepared since the last meeting. Um, I know it's hard when you get the information like on a Thursday and the meetings on a Monday. You know. So Super Bowl Sunday. <laughs> no. Uh, no. Yeah. No, you're a week. Takes weeks to recover from this. Because okay. <laughs> <laughs> the game was so thrilling. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was the AAF Sunday. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was the other one Paul was talking about. <laughs> <laughs> it's even harder to recover from. So I didn't make any changes to lots in two districts. I know you, there's a conversation about the applicability of the aquifer protection district and the idea that someone might want that to apply even more broadly than it already does to their lot. Um, I didn't. We can talk about that more if you want. Um, I did make changes to everything else, and I provided document um, about um, footnote one. For myself. Oh, yes, I do. Let's talk about oh. footnote one okay. because that's the one that's. So we have a lot of information about footnote one. Um, I had our GIS administrator figure out like exactly how many parcels in town might be able to utilize footnote one, which the um, prior to nineteen four April nineteen forty two had eight or more principal habitable rooms. Um, so we have. Um, 900? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, on the order of magnitude of 900 parcels in town that could huh. could fall into that. Um, that's that's based on like assessing data, which isn't perfect. And and then the assessor, the building commissioner would have to go out to the property and like determine that four of those rooms weren't added on since 1942 or something like that. But so so it's probably not actually 900, but that's where we're starting from. Um, 
and then I propose some changes to the language to try to sort so we don't get rid of it, but we can clarify it maybe. And maybe like you mentioned, maybe result in a, some units that are smaller and, and more reasonably priced for our families or kids in our or something. Do we have a phrasing that distinguishes between overlay district and the base um, district? With regards to? What, the exclusion for, or the aquifer protection overlay. Wait, so you're talking about lots and two districts? Right. Um, Because I'm, I'm the I'm not sure that the, an overlay district creates the same situation as the um, a lot which which spans um, the, the zoning district boundary. Or use, so use. I was thinking about the overlay districts that we have in town, and we have like two different types. We have zoning districts like the downtown smart growth district which matches business b and in my way of thinking if you can expand business b 30 feet into the lot why wouldn't you be able to expand 40r into the lot um and then we have the environmental overlays so the flood thing and the offer right. um and i'm not sure we need to say anything okay I, that's just where i ended up like I don't think we need to list them. I don't think we need to say these, but not these, because I don't think anyone is going to want to apply the floodplain or the aquifer to more of their lot than it already does. Well, I was thinking about the opposite issue, is if, if a portion of their lot is included in the overlay. It's the difference between the overlay and the underlying zoning. I just don't, that it, it, it can't, the aquifer protection can't be less. It can't go 30 feet in. I mean, it's an environmental. Um, it, you know, it's the it's the watershed. Okay. Maybe, maybe we're, it's not something that we if would somebody has entertain. if somebody has right. the last um, sixty feet of his lot is in S fifteen versus S uh, twenty, but it's also covered by the aquifer protection overlay. Which rules apply? You can uh, you could extend the S15 30 feet, but you're not going to touch off the aquifer protection district. It's based on topography. It's based on how the water flows. I mean, it's not. Well, I'm saying does it interfere with? No, it wouldn't. The extent. It okay. would be what it is, and then you could move the underlying zoning lines. Okay. That's how I think that would actually play out. Okay. I guess. I mean, like, I, yeah. I could, I'll be the first person to be proven wrong when we... <laughs> oh, no, I took that a long time but ago. <laughs> <laughs> just... just to be clear, as written, as written, we're not proposing any changes to it now, right? What do you mean? 3.4, sorry. No, we are. So you're deleting the provided however, right? And yes, which is it. currently right. what's in the bylaw. Yeah, I understand. Getting rid of it. But to your right. point, it really wasn't doing anything anyway. I don't think, I mean, well, what it was doing, it was applying to multifamily housing. That We're getting rid of that part. Staying with 3.4.1, if you have a lot that is half in the aquifer district and half not in the aquifer district, you can build on the portion of the lot that's not in the aquifer district up to the 25% and the portion of the lot that is in the aquifer district, district up to 15% today. Is that well, correct? you have to meet overall lot coverage, right? So you have 15% is what's restricted by the Aquifer Protection District, but then the zoning district that it's in has a total. Right. Yeah. So if the lot is 
100 by 100. And at 50, at 50 there's aquifer and non-aquifer. You could cover, so it's the total for the lot. So is it 15% for the lot? Or uh, I think it's 20. I, I don't bring my zoning bar tonight. Um, it's different depending on the zoning district. But let's say 25% for the whole lot, right? Even though part of it is in the aquifer protection district, which is only yeah. 15. And, yeah so if you exceed the 15% in the, in the area that's in the aquifer protection district, you have to provide a system of artificial recharge for anything greater than that, which is approved by the town engineer. Right. So. The answer to my initial question was yes, in the aquifer protection district, doesn't matter for the entire lot coverage, you can't exceed 50% coverage of the aquifer protection district portion of your lot. Correct. Within that area. Without, Correct. Without that a, line exists right. regardless, you can't exceed 15% in that. Okay. That, that lot. portion of it. Well, you no, can, no, you and can. you provide and a system of artificial recharge. Right, right, right. No, I'm sorry. Right. Yes. <coughs> so it's it's like 2,500 square feet or 15 percent, you know, whichever's greater, and then yeah. like, you know, yeah, or whichever's okay. lesser, maybe. Um, okay. In that case, but so nobody's ever going to force themselves to do 15 percent when they have 25 percent. Yeah, no, no one's going to do that. <laughs> People are going to actually try to regrade their lot and then come in and say, "Look, we're not in the aquifer protection district." <laughs> I mean, that would be the more likely scenario, I would think. Anyway. Okay, and the changes to 5.3, 1 and 3, 2. We're so adding a limit to the amount of expansion on those units, right? Yeah, and I just, um, I don't know what the correct percent is for that. Um, we've allowed, like, 50%, so no, so each of the two new units created has to be like no less than 50% in the old structure that they can add, so they can add, you know, 49% 40, or whatever. Um, which, you know, arguably changes the nature of the structure considerably. Um, That's a 100% increase. Yeah, it is. Um, <coughs> Well, I read this carefully and said to myself that it's a good idea. The changes? The proposed change is okay. appropriate. Does it, I mean, I'm just rereading this memo from the lawyers. It, does it address all of the he, I keep, fusion I keep on that? I keep being told that there's no good argument for keeping the footnote and that we should get rid of it because it's a lawsuit waiting to happen. That's that's what they keep saying to me. Um, and I keep saying, well, there's a lot of challenges with just getting rid of it and what do we do about houses that have been converted under the footnote and then there's like no record except for the building file, which is imperfect. And how does someone know down the road that it's not a buy right to family? It is a buy right to family technically, but, but they can't take it, tear it down and then build another two family because they lose the rights to it because then the house no longer exists, so the footnote no, no longer applies. I mean, it's like a big mess. <laughs> So, um, well, I think this this clearly says why we want to have the the note in there, right? Because there's a lot of it applies right. to a lot of properties. It could apply to a large number of properties. Yes. Yeah. Um, so, town council's point is that if you took this footnote away, you'd still be allowed to do this. You no. would not be allowed to do it at all. It's in this. It's single family and business A. So. Um, those, the two families not allowed. This is the only way. But we have in the back of our zoning, we've got the sort of historical records. Right. As well. the historical records. I'm just being realistic. It's hard to piece things together. It can be hard to piece things together. Okay, well, I think the first question to ask then is whether this is something we want or don't want. I think if you, I think if we, like you mentioned that, um, you know, one benefit is it could result in smaller units. I mean, honestly, I don't know right now that that math works because if you tear down and build one enormous structure, one single unit, you could sell for more than two, two really small ones. I, I mean, I don't know. Run it. I'm not smart. That's not my area of expertise. Um, but maybe at some point, if the economic landscape changes, like two smaller units would be a completely viable scenario. Um, and then you're expanding the housing options in town for people. It's not a bad. It's not a bad goal. 
You guys here for something specific? You want to weigh in? Well, can I just ask a question? Sure. Why is this being proposed? <clears throat> well, as, as Julie mentioned, there's some concern that the footnote that this is addressing is a, a legal mess and a confusing section of the code. Yes. So the way that I understand it is that there have been a lot of developers that have come in and um, um, stretch the limits of what um, it means to alter a, 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 a building. To deter. Well, a so, single family home. N no, not necessarily. It's it's right. It's it's to make sh the intent. Our understanding of the intent is that was that um, that that you could have a, an existing home in a neighborhood and convert it to a two family in making some small changes to it, which you probably would need to do a new entrance and you know, um, but not wholesale changes. Um, but what what was happening is. Uh, uh, people were taking this um, in the way that it was originally written and um, creating significantly changed um, uh, uh, Property. properties um, uh, that weren't necessarily fitting in with the neighborhood, basically doubling the size. So when they came to you, you had to approve it because of the language. They never came to this board, but it was oh. so it's a, it's a buy right thing. If they can yeah. meet certain criteria, they can do this with a single family property, and then the building commissioner issues a building permit. Okay. But it's just been very very challenging because it's not very specific. No, I've seen some of these. Houses and so we're kind of doing it in an ad hoc manner across the counter, and it feels like very, I don't know, it's <coughs> just not very straightforward. Well, wow. I can't imagine you sit on 900 plus, approximately 900 homes with this effect, that in residential neighborhoods that are primarily single families, those neighbors aren't going to want quote more quote, two families, you know, even though they're small units, just parking or whatever other issues that would cause. So I think that's that's the question right. here, yeah. really. Is so the way that it's written, I don't. I think it's it, it was a, at least from town staff's perspective, it's not working because it's creating, it's opening the door to um, uh, two family conversions that are uh, not in keeping with the neighborhood, right? right. And and I, exactly. I I have no reason to believe that's not <laughs> that's not true. Um, yeah. And but I think that what you bring up is it is a different question, which was what. Nick was getting at, I think, is do, um, do we even want to allow conversion of single-family homes to yeah, that, two that's family? Too and and I, that that was that we haven't discussed that at all. We haven't. Done. It's like a big. It's a big picture that's, thing. So, like I was saying, was that. If you kept, uh, if you if you followed the intent of what this probably meant, it's probably much smaller. You know, it was an eight-room house. Maybe they added another entrance, so everyone gets four rooms, and you get a couple of small, affordable units. You know, kids graduate and they're looking for a place to stay in town. Elderly people looking to downsize, but building, you know, something that's twice as big isn't serving that market. It's just sort of destroying the neighborhood character and creating a headache, if you ask me. Yeah. So that's where we are. Right. We're trying to we're trying to make it so that it stays true to the, what the in, we think is the intent because there's no record of it. See? Mm -hmm. What about in-law apartments? Excuse me. Is that we have those mm. under a different provision of the bylaw. Yeah. So that's um, allowed by different yeah. rules. We have many different ways that people mm -hmm. can do and that. And we encourage that. We try to encourage yes. that within the rules. Again, people have tried to manipulate those rules. Right. And you know, yeah. you say that they're building an in-law and then double the size of the house, and then you get this little in-law thing. So you're just trying to rework the language to make it a little bit more understandable and well, the, consistent. Yeah, historically, the 1942 is when the zoning was originally uh, established, and at that time, it prohibited uh, development of two-family houses. So the footnote was a uh, grandfather exemption. It says houses of a certain size, if they were there before the two family or was prohibited, had an out. Right. So it's, it's, to a certain extent, it's a, it's a historical uh, okay. help. Okay. No, I understand what I'm saying. Yeah. 
Well, I think most of it was designed to keep a larger, you know, one of those pre-mansions from the 1920s, 1930s when they would build them and allow the house to remain and allow you to subdivide it out into smaller sections. Yes. Right. So you get to keep that historical right. Right. 1800s or whatever house, mm -hmm. but you can Preserve now- Preserve the bigger house, right? Right. Have it smaller. So I ask you with the way that you, that it's your proposed amendment, um, wouldn't I just go in and build double the size of the house if I'm allowed to and then say oh now I'm converting it right like so basically add on to so keep the eight rooms add on to it and then convert it yeah yeah why not <laughs> I mean that's like another well, what would that violate? Because um, the, the thing no, that you're converting the, didn't the, exist. The, he would keep the eight rooms, right? Stuff. So those would right. still yeah, be the there. New section. The added on would be. The ten percent wouldn't apply to the new section. Well, so. So you're saying without this ten percent limit, or you're saying with the ten percent addition limit? I own. Let's say you know I own a two thousand square foot house. I'm putting an addition on it. I'm making it 4,000 square feet. So this is not with my proposed change? Wait, no. Yeah. I, I'm just going to do yeah, that. Yeah, okay. And then two months later, a month later, mm -hmm. I convert one of those um, those rooms into a kitchen, and um, and I say, oh, I'm converting this to a two-family. Two with, with permits, of course. With per yeah. Um, right. Yep. Sounds that's great. how I do it. I thought right. we talked about why that couldn't happen originally. Or that, that was one of the things they were doing. Well, so we were, we've been getting proposals like where people want to take down three walls of a room and then maybe redo the floor. And then we're like, well, then is the existing room still existing if it's changed that much? And, and then they want to take it and move the foundation from this place to this place. And it's just so similar things <coughs> have been proposed, basically. Um, and it's it's just it's tricky yeah. because at a certain point it's hard to say that 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 those eight finished and have. What if you added something like because how do you prove this right? You know, dwelling existed prior to 1942, which at the time at least eight finished and habitable principal rooms. Um, can you say something like? Um, that, that must be maintained in its original con configuration. So that the original portion must be maintained in its original configuration. So you can't move it's too much. You can't move it off the foundation. Yeah, just but maybe you need to put a new foundation under it. I mean, you could pick it up and build it. Yeah, but I also think that like maybe you want to divide right down the middle, and so four of the rooms are in one and four in the other, and then is that technically the original configuration? Yeah, I'm thinking we talk about the shell, because that's what we're talking about. You know, you're talking about um, mm -hmm. the external appearance is existing, right? Right. Well, the alternative would be to uh, take the same group of properties and say that they could be converted with a special permit procedure. Yeah, I mean, right now we allow it by right. That doesn't have to be the case. That's true. Yeah, that might be better. Probably better. So a special permit would bring it in front of the board, and then there'd be consideration for what they're proposing. I've been the Wild Wild West on there, where someone has a home. A lot of homes are built up on this board, too. Yes. Right. But have to add eight rooms. Correct. Yeah. So that's what that, that yeah, that's what that that's exercise what that there is. No, some 900 of them. I read that. Yeah. Eight yeah. rooms is a good size yeah. house depending yeah. on when it was built. But, um, but you know, I don't know. I, I can see that the way to word it. I, mean, I can't see the way to word it to cover everything. That's the hard part, as we guys are discussing. But um, changing neighborhoods, you know, that's. Yeah. I, I like that idea of of changing this from a footnote to a special permit mm -hmm. because I do think that right now without it by keeping it by right um, uh, there is still a path 
to doing things incrementally yes, right. that we just can't, can't track. track and can't well, special control. permits get recorded, so there's a there's you know, a record as well. It's right. easier to trace. Okay, so back to John's example, he builds a 2,000 square foot addition into a single family home, and he comes before us for a special permit. Well, it's, but that What's gives changed? the abutters and everybody else the opportunity to to complain about something that's going to get built. Right. <laughs> you know what? What, what changes that from? It, what changes um, that example from going through? Well, okay, it's not so, by right. so for example. So, so there's a risk, I'm sorry, there's no, a no, risk no. there that they, if that's, if that's their intent, there's a risk there that they're going to build that and um, and it doesn't get approved as a, as a well, um, the well, other thing is home. if we decide to go ahead with this, right, from the day that the advertisement for the public hearing is published, this is effective. Mm -hmm. So at that point, anyone that wants to, has that idea of adding on and then converting, um, and someone who does an addition, if it's more than 10% of the gross floor area of the, of the house that was in 1942 or whatever, um, like we'll have a building permit record of that addition. And we can say, nope, this was effective. The zoning bylaw was effective. You've increased it more than ten percent. This no longer applies to you. That's not the way that I read this. Well, maybe we can make it. Yeah, 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 yeah. But you know what so, I'm saying. So, so right. If the intent here is that that the building can never have been expanded more than ten percent from that 1942 condition, that's different than what it says right. here. Right. Mm -hmm. But that's like one way. I yeah. Don't know, to I'd also. That. I don't even say go. Well, maybe say that, but twenty five. <laughs> So twenty percent of the original building yeah. footprint. Yeah. Which I assume the building inspector could pretty much figure out what was original. Yeah, I mean one. I think he's pretty good at it. I think he's pretty good at it. And that would give them enough leeway to actually make an effective two family. So we could say the conversion increases the gross floor area of the original structure by no more than twenty percent or something like that. Well it's, it's well it's or of the existing, or of the structure existing <laughs> February 11th, 2019. <laughs> it existed. Yeah. It's original configuration in 1940. I, I mean, that's, it's, it's tricky. It's tricky, and is how that, is it less litigious? Well, and I also yeah. think that it's yeah. also going to be challenging at the counter, or, or as a special permit for you guys, or for the ZBA. Um, do we really need to create more headaches? I, I, mean, I would use protecting the neighborhoods against that. Well, we could just much. get rid of the footnote. And not allow it. Which is what keeps getting get suggested to me by town council. And he doesn't think we'll get sued by eliminating it? I think he thinks we're eventually going to get sued by keeping it. No, I don't think he thinks we'll get sued by it. I mean, we can eliminate things from zoning. Sorry, so if you eliminate it, then there's no more converting to from one to two family. It, yeah, right, exactly. That's Except anybody stuff. who's already it's converting can tear down and build up a new two family. But you can't convert what you have. No, no. Once you raise the original structure, the footnote will no longer applies. But we just got rid of the footnote. <laughs> no, so, because it's not well, allowed. Yeah, it's, an, yeah. it's two families are not allowed in these zoning right. districts. But it would be a pre-existing two family. Pre-existing non-conforming. No, this right. will never be considered pre-existing non-conforming because currently it's done by right. It's a by right use. And town council has that in this letter, that it, it can never be considered anymore. a pre-existing non-conforming use. The use won't use. be permitted, yeah. period. So, to, well, so okay, from what, so a, a, a single family that has been converted to a two-family under this footnote by right, right is raised, the next structure that has to go up, it has to be a single family That's correct. based on that. That is correct. So they have so no relatively large decision about the families. economics of the town. Yeah. I mean, that's just, it's... It's just making a pretty clear distinction. That Except that, like, how many of you guys are aware of this footnote until we brought it to your attention? <laughs> like, I mean, that's the thing. I was counting on it, damn it. But <laughs> there aren't that many people in town that realize this is even a possibility. The builders are. Of course, they do now. Right. Yeah. We're talking about it. But <laughs> I would if I had a house that was big enough to be considered, you know, a, a potential to, to convert it to a two family. <laughs> Right, I, I would, I would 
know that that's a that's an opportunity for me down the like no. you would buy your house, or and, or you would look into it before you bought, or no. like right after you bought, to, to no, see what I can be done. No, no, no. But as I'm <laughs> thinking about, right, how, what you do with the biggest piece of, yes, you know, the, your, your biggest, biggest investment, yeah. 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 What are my opportunities in the in the future? And one might be that I downsize, and how I downsize is converting it to a two-family. So then we should allow it, but not allow it. The house is to. It should be for it should be downsizing, yeah, legitimate downsizing. No expansion of size, which but is also also, also impacts the economics. Yeah, but, yeah. I like the special permit idea. And okay. do you want it by this board or by the zoning board? Because they have <laughs> accessory apartments, which I know wasn't right. exactly the idea that we had originally. Um, yeah, that was some for that one. at the end there, right? Yeah. Um, well, for example, we've got on the, the south side of South Street opposite Sturgis Park is the, uh, the two-family which came before the board with the big driveway change and so on and so forth. We've got the... And that was in the in-law. Yeah. And then there's the pre-existing non-conforming four-family on South Street that came before this board some number of years back. Uh, and we determined that, that we couldn't do anything to, to change it. But it's this basically run down uh, four apartment building on South Street, overlooking or you know, backing up onto uh, I-93. I mean, so there are, there are places in our neighborhoods where this thing makes a difference. And, and I'm not saying that we should keep it or, or necessarily get rid of it, but it's it's not a moot point. Why don't we explore the special permit process and then see if we can come up with language that protects, uh, protects us, I guess, or limits what this can be. And then if we can't come up with the language, then we'll have to get rid of it. But I'm just wondering, how we're going to get through town meeting because they're not going to understand all the implications. No, all they're going to hear is can't convert to family. Correct. So you'd have to show them something that says every single one of these could be converted and all the neighborhoods become two family neighborhoods. Yeah, you know, so just add another night well, to town meeting. Right, but I mean, <laughs> the other thing too so is hard like, to make them understand this is like, it's, this is sensational because when we actually dig into the details of most of these, probably a significant number of them don't comply. Understood, understood, but everyone's, you know. I've seen all these sort of simple things get complicated when they don't get understood and then people just vote them down because they don't understand it. They don't want to, they don't want to change anything. Because yeah, one word alone can break. Yeah. 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 If they think they're losing value potentially. Right, and well, a lot of them do. might be, you know, so. Something they'll never do, like most. Yeah. These will get converted when somebody buys that house from them, as a builder does, yeah. and converts yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. They won't do it themselves, yeah. typically. No, no, that they're all developers yeah. that we're talking yeah. to. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. it's true. Okay, so. Yeah, we've, we've got to remember to talk to the uh, affordable housing Oh yeah, None of this is built into our housing plan. Is it expectation that some of these take over? Um, no, not this footnote one. No. Okay. But is there? But I mean, never be able to count these. Well, yeah, but I mean. Well, we've got Reading right, House, so Reading, Reading Housing Authority already. So there's the SHI, these. and then there's like housing that's actually affordable to people. Right, I right, mean, and that's it's two different things. They're yeah. totally different things. Yeah. <sighs> All right, so then we should talk about um, mixed use and the intensity regulations um, on South Main Street. And I have maps that. Um, should we bring that table over here? Maybe? Hey, you guys had asked for like a GIS. Oh, it's, yeah. I, we didn't do an analysis, but we have some maps that kind of show the lots and the um, design. And uh, I was thinking what we would do like in the future is. and just see how they, because we have like, scalable maps here. Um, did you look at, anyone look at what I proposed over the weekend? Is the zoning? Not over the weekend, today. Let's just throw those on there. Um, So 
So, um, these up. what will you put up? Safe in the floor. Can I just explain real quick yeah, what I did? Why. Okay. So, last time we talked about the intensity regulations, which is section six. And we talked about, I, I just kind of highlighted that like we have stricter requirements for multifamily in business A than we do for almost like any other use. Um, mm -hmm. And I had some like suggestions and we didn't really delve into it too much, but I thought I would come back just kind of like some actual ideas of what we could do. And then when I was looking through them and um, like thinking about it, we, so we talked about doing some surgical changes to the zoning bylaw to be uh, more flexible and a little bit more specific about what we do want to allow on South Main Street. And then we talked about looking at an overlay district as well. And I realized that since we don't actually have a, ca a use category for mixed use, so right now we allow mixed use, um, it's just that it's not explicit. Um, so you can have a property on South Main Street that has different types of uses in it. Um, and as long as it doesn't trigger a site plan, and as long as the uses are allowed either by right or by special permit, there's not, well, by right, then there's not much of a process except for a building permit. Um, but we don't have like a use category that's specifically for mixed use. So what I did is I thought we could define it, include that it would allow a residential component, be like specific, that it's different than the other types of mixed use that can already happen because this type of mixed use would require a residential component. Um, and then have specific regulations in the table of dimensional controls that allow for flexibility. So if you do a mixed use structure with a residential component, you can have a more, uh, you can do more on your lot than if you just did like a strict forward multifamily project or um, other types of permitted uses in the district. So without fully changing South Main Street to a residential district, um, we have a way here of like allowing maybe some more feasible residential to happen. That was kind of what I was going for. So I had to, in doing that, I had to change um, section six and section five and section two, um, which is why there's so much stuff. So it's by special permit? Yeah, so I, um, which would come to this commission. All right, and then I guess the biggest piece I would ask about is um, 6243, where you... Say it again, what section? 6.2.4.3, okay. growth mm -hmm. floor area. Really. Minimum 25% has to be commercial, right? Yeah, and I don't know if that's the right number. I just started with a number. Yeah, um, and I'm just wondering, is that something that's waivable? Because you know what ends up happening, right? What's, what's ended up happening with all of our development commercial is that um, they look to reduce it or... Well, do we want it to be waivable, though? I'd say no. Right. I don't, I'm not in business A. That's right. my opinion. I mean, I really want that commercial component. I was thinking like 25% might not even be enough if we're talking yeah. about our commercial mm -hmm. corridor. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, we're, we're sort of giving them the residential because that might help them make it more affordable, right? It gives them something they can easily turn over. You can turn over one bedroom, two bedroom units you know, quickly. And so there's that level of rent coming in while you try to make something work down below. Right. And then actually, so under the use regulations in Section 5, I proposed like a number of things. So specific regulations for the mixed use um, piece. I apologize, it included all the formatting. I could not figure out how to shut that off. I like the formatting. And, and create the PDF. Like you, have to, you have to go through and only all show up when I create the PDF. It doesn't happen every time, though. It, it, but yeah. it's bullets in, in word or not. Yeah. yeah. You just save a copy, accept all the changes, and then make a video. Just accept the <coughs> formatting changes, formatting not, changes. not yes. the word changes. Yeah. Right. Okay. To just yeah. go through and like yeah, 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 yeah. That makes sense now. Yep. <laughs> um, so <laughs> this is a lot, and um. I was thinking, like, you know, if we're going to allow a residential component, we really should require some portion of it to be affordable. Not always. Yes. 
Right. Um, so just then we get saying, into yeah, so inclusionary zoning, which is like another um, complex animal. Limited to business A and business C, you're saying, no, right? Or is it just business A? So, um, uh, the reason that I put business C in there is because, let me just remind myself why I did that. Because we got that one piece of property. Because multifamily, um, which one is REI? Yeah. Excuse. I was working backwards. There was a reason that wasn't good. <clears throat> Can you indulge me for a minute? Yes. So looking at the existing, and I know you've said this a, a couple times, but. Which one? Um, the red one or the blue one? Well, I'm, I don't know. I'm looking at the red one. The red one, okay. Um, is right now, I don't see that you can get to a multi-use structure with um, residential in business A. Uh, yeah. Why? Well, how do you use? How do you get? So it's right. It's it's the two uses, the two allowed uses together in the same structure, right? Do you mean right now under our current zoning yes. or right now with what? Right now right. under our current zoning. Okay. You can't get there, correct? Why? We don't say anywhere that you can't have multiple principal uses in one building. <clears throat> so where is the, um, how do I build that? Oh. Where do I? Feasibly speaking? No, 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 like no. no. How do I put a multifamily unit in um, a business A? It's allowed. Where? 40R, 40B. No, no. No, no, no. no, no. no, no. Where? Under the right. table of uses in section 5. Oh. You just look mm -hmm. in the blue one. <laughs> By the way, if you have any comments or questions, please just speak up. And feel free to come closer if you can't hear. Yeah, so we allow um, in business A. Business A, multi. <coughs> single family, two family, and multi family. All right, so, and then the, but the, when we go to the table of dimensional controls, yeah. it's an other permitted, this is really where I was going originally, it's an other permitted principal use. No, it's under multifamily dwelling at the top. Uh, is it? It is. Multifamily dwelling in business A, that's not, I just highlighted it. Just to, to make it pop out for you guys. Oh, I thought that was new. New is what's bold and oh, red. I'm yeah. sorry, I no. thought that was new. Yeah, so right now, and we, we actually had a few years ago a property owner come to speak with Glenn about this, and he was going to allow it. A few units on top and a business below. Um, never happened, but because we don't say you can't do it. Right. We don't say you explicitly can, but. But you have to comply with the most restrictive. Right, 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 yes. So that's the challenge, like to have a 40,000 square foot and to meet all the setbacks. And, um, right. And, and maybe there's a reason that it's so restrictive that is our commercial corridor. Right. Right, which I think is so, probably where where we got there. But like, is that the way we want to do zoning? Right, discouraging what we don't want versus incentivizing what we do want. Um, given that people will take the easiest path to something, if the what we don't want is easy to get, yeah, we should discourage it. Why not just not allow or like? Well, it's not allowed then. That's pretty good discouragement. <laughs> I mean, it just seems silly to me to be like, yes, you can do it, but we're going to make it like impossible to actually. Well, well no, here. It's, it. No, this is, uh, right? I, I think the discussion was yeah, if you have a big, big lot, yeah. okay. go, go for it. But you can't try and shoehorn it in, right? Yeah. Because there's not that many places you can. Well, so so I guess w the reason why I brought that up, I was just trying to figure out, trying to see, okay, how would how would someone go about that, doing that today, and the restrictions that we have on that 
now, mm -hmm. which is, you know, at least from a dimensional standpoint, it needs to be a 40,000 square foot lot. And um, the difficult one is probably... They're all difficult. They're all difficult. Coverage is... is coverage is 25% lot coverage in 30, 30 foot side yard. Yeah. With the 30 so foot thirty foot yard. side yard, yeah. that's sixty feet out of yeah. your frontage, right. and yeah. there you go. And then, and then, and oh, by the way, the height of your multifamily building that we allow is less than what we allow for any other type of use in that district. So. Yeah, it's possible they were thinking that the sites would be accumulated too, right? So when we start stacking up sites and then make one big site, and you come in sixty, it's not so bad. Yep. Right. It wasn't I mean, made so easy and it wasn't made clear for a reason, probably. So, like, what I'm thinking is now, given the current economy and that housing is, like, what's driving the market, mm -hmm. and we've been hearing that, you know, people want more flexibility, and we have some, some properties on South Main Street that are going to turn over, like, do we try to make this a little more workable? I, I'm for that. I mean, I... I, I like that because right without some the way the market is and has been for a long time now and tell me if I'm wrong but you know we get we're we're either going to get proposals like we seen the past month or two right with some sort of uh, I'm going to say um, bo boring retail focused um, storefront um, or allow something like this because right trying to make a, trying to make a a something more dense on a some other for some other commercial use is proving to be difficult right with the space that anyone has available right okay so if we want more redevelopment of this i see this is the only way to go but we don't to want it to be like entirely housing, right? So right. then we have to no. put limits no. on, yes. yeah. on it, which is kind of what I was going for with the, uh, I think it's in the red one, or is it in the blue one? <laughs> the use, um, yeah, it's in the blue one. The mixed use regulations. Um, And actually, to back up one second, what I was going for with my definition of mixed use, which is on the first page of the blue one, I was trying to separate this so it would be two different uses from different use categories, one of which would be resident, two or more, one of which would be residential. So that if someone comes in with a building and wants to do multiple uses within the business category or whatever, they don't find themselves like having to come for a special permit. Like, so the things that we currently allow, as long as they don't trigger site plan, could still happen. That's kind of what I was trying to accomplish with this. That's a good point. We need to dive into this a little bit, get yes. some comments, but what's the next step on this? Exactly what you, what you said. So I'll keep like refining it. Um, I have like work, I have work to do on the regulations. Um, I was thinking that the inclusionary housing component should be, I was thinking of keeping it really straightforward. So one unit for every 10. Um, I don't know like how the development world would feel about that. Um, right now, under 40R, we exclude projects of 12 units or less. These are called small projects. They don't have to have an affordable component. So I don't know if like the sweet spot number to make the financials work is, is different than 10, but I but 1 in 10 keeps us on pace with, yeah, you know. Yeah, I'm thinking 40R imposes other things, other, other restrictions on them, like yeah. working, you know, the sites are different. 
Right, I mean, we would have... I mean, every housing unit needs parking, so it's... We actually have work... But the commercial stuff wouldn't be exempt, like at some of the... Yes, that's stuff correct, is, right. So, so, that, so there's actually harder parking challenges yeah. in Business A. But they have to provide them in order to make that business viable, or maybe they can provide them, it makes the business more viable. You know, so I, yeah, maybe the number needs to be higher. Maybe, maybe given... Development world is always going to resist. Right. No, no right. matter what your number is, you said five percent. That still says. We, they would. That is correct. But we still we want to try to be smart so that things happen. Yeah. Right. So if we don't count on it for our housing production, mm -hmm. and we say ten percent, that's still ten percent keeps us on, like you said, on pace, right? Right. So I think that has to be the minimum. We can't get behind. Yeah. I mean, right. I, mean, I would. Picking a number out of the year, I would say one and one and eight. As long as we have a lower limit, it says if you know for projects of twelve, of 12 or more, then uh, one eighth, or uh, rather than the one tenth, because the one tenth means that you you're never going to get any benefit. Yes, but one tenth is probably easy for the community to digest because we talk so much about the ten percent number. I was thinking of like for our first foray into like local inclusionary zoning. I mean, and given all the other things that were changing in this, it might be good to, to keep it simple. I don't know. So I think the discussion previously um, was that. You know, right? If these are are these likely to be small developments, and um, are you going to so ten percent of? Right, I get the ten percent number, but that means per each development, you would get one. And no, so it's this would right. be a lot to go through for one affordable unit. If that you know, if you're building something that has. Four units. Well, so um, I say ten or more. Yeah. So we're gonna we would probably end up with a lot of we could end yep. up with a lot of smaller projects that have less than ten units, and no and then no affordable units, right? But we don't count on it for our. It's still gonna count towards our. Those are counting towards the Yeah. yeah. So. Right. I was saying that you know we sacrifice the affordable unit to get the development on the commercial side, which might be more important, really, on the corridor. But it does put us behind. We've got to keep up yeah. with the numbers, with the denominator. But this isn't this isn't land that right. If we're doing a right the housing production plan, if we're doing it, this is not what this land is is targeted no. for. Right. Even if it even if it's even if it it slides us back a little bit. What's the max number of units we could get at? It's rhetorical, of course, but. What's the max number of units we could possibly get in business A, and what kind of impact is that versus the depends on like 40 hours and 40 years. How much flexibility we build into the mixed use zoning? 100 units. I mean, 500 units. Yeah, you can get 500. I don't know. When you, when you say units, excuse me, do you, do you take into account square footage? No. 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 No, it's well, what, what do you either. mean? No, no, but if you, if you have that mean? first, but you have that mixed use component, right? Mm -hmm. A restaurant would be more square footage mm -hmm. than a. Uh, you know, oh, residential units we're talking. Okay, residential. So yeah, we're, oh, we're sorry. talking about allowing yeah. a mix of commercial no, no, and right, residential. Right, I'm saying if you have, a, if you have three storefronts, yep. and three storefronts can accommodate a certain use, and one big storefront can accommodate a restaurant or a, a liquor store or, or whatever, and that's the, that's the first floor. So you, that, that, that's regardless of what's above it. Uh, you yes. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. How you cut the first floor it doesn't matter. No, as long as when they come before us with a plan, they've accounted for any potential division of that thing. It's going to be four stores or one big store, and you know, there's enough parking for it, enough access, and all that. Yeah. We're concerned is that if we allow this mixed use, um, how does it impact our affordable housing number, which you know, then makes us susceptible to um, uncontrolled development? Uncontrolled. How many potential lots on South Main Street that are developable? Well, 
they're all very difficult to develop. That's why. Yeah. Yeah. They're shallow. That. There's ledge. There's topography. There's wetlands on some. Yeah. Um, yeah, most of them have developments on them already, so you know that aren't vacant. So, so you're trying to make a one size fits all approach instead. Of oh no, no. no. We're, we're trying to uh, we're trying to give them enough tools to try and figure out what they could do. To give a little more flexibility of like what could happen. Um, yeah. In fact, we want the um, active businesses or development on property which is underutilized currently. So. Okay. Let me get you some comments. Do we want to have a workshop at some point? When do we have that workshop? Like a... Um, Soliciting some opinions. Yeah, so a, a public workshop or... Yeah. We probably need to figure out, like actually figure out more okay. about this. I don't know. You targeting um, any particular town meeting? Uh, no, well, I mean... November or later. It's like April that sh that ship oh, sailed. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah, you know, the warrant's like getting printed right know. now. Okay, I didn't know if it was literally next April. N no, it could be. Okay, like November or April. No, it's definitely not this one. Definitely not. Okay. Um, yeah. So, you know, ideally November. Um, warrant closes in September? Mm hmm. So August, July public hearings. June, yeah, June, July. Yeah. He said June, June, July. Yeah. Um, Stuff. Yeah. Okay. So Super feedback good. on this, like, do, do you think this is a good direction to go in? Like, just adding a mixed, explicitly saying we allow mixed use and this is what we want. Um, well, I think we need to do something like that. We need to basically highlight it. Um, so that we could start talking about it more meaningfully. Yeah, I mean, it may or may not be successful. I mean, the first pass, but we've got a, uh, we've got a lot of things that haven't worked yet for the South Main Street. Okay. Um, do you have any comments on anything? Uh, what are the other considerations that you think about doing it? In terms of you mentioned height, started thinking about height. Uh, what about the, uh, the lot that falls into uh, multi zone, like residential and business zone? What are the type of considerations you can, you're thinking of that? Uh, and then this, 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 the notes that you have can be can, can it be available to the public yes. uh, before public hearings? Mm -hmm. Some of the developers, some of the builders can comment on it. Yep, yep. Um, so do you want to pull up the lots in two districts and just show them? With regards to the lots that are in two zoning districts, we are proposing what's on the screen, which is like to remove the clause that excludes multifamily housing. Um, so the zone boundary extension would apply to any of the lots, regardless of what use. Um, and then we, I have, we have some things, we're, we're looking at all of the dimensional requirements. Um, so I can share this with you. Praveen, right? Yeah. yeah, I can share Especially this. Especially if you're in mixed use building, the commercial height generally required more than the residential height, so the total height would be uh, need, more needed. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Is that where the, the and, um, commercial space tends to have the, the higher yeah, uh, ceiling heights and, and so forth. Yeah, mm -hmm. and we can put all this stuff online mm -hmm. too. This all should be online. Oh, did you already? Yes. Okay, great. All right. Chris, if you want to build a hotel or motel in business, I think that's my right. <laughs> <laughs> Well, except for site plan. Right? Yeah. Was it? <laughs> I thought so. <laughs> um, It'd be an unloaded corridor as opposed to a double loaded corridor because you wouldn't even have room for the corridor. <laughs> you have a ladder going up to each, each room, would have its own ladder. <laughs> Thank you. It would make for a pretty interesting weather. Yeah, thanks for your comments. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Did you have any comments? Um, okay. Anything else? Perfectos? 
So I, I was working on the design guidelines all day today, and I have like a draft um, that I'm gonna email you probably like tomorrow. Okay. Um, I didn't think we would like talk about it tonight, especially caught off the press. But I've tried to like incorporate a lot of the feedback, and then um, and then Jean's like guiding principles, I built them into like our first section where we have our guiding principles. Um, and then some of the comments about like um, I think Pammy had some comments about like making sure that any changes to 40 R projects get reviewed by the CPDC and like that's already built into the um, downtown smart growth district section of the bylaw so I I incorporated a lot of your feedback like in other places um, but then I took some out where it's like already covered by the zoning bylaw um, but so I'll send that around um, for feedback as well so we can keep that conversation going. I read in the paper you got a grant. Oh, is that public? We got the that. grant for the district management. It wasn't actually. We tricked you. <laughs> yeah. Well, it was awarded last Thursday. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so that's the district management. So for no, for downtown organization, so we can try to figure out how to champion the downtown. So yeah, how that should be so bid in some ways. Uh, probably not, but <laughs> that's one idea. <laughs> I did, yeah, I don't think it'll end up being that, but but that is one idea. Um, okay. So yeah, we'll be working with a consultant starting soon. Right. Yeah. <coughs> Okay. Good. I didn't know that no. was in the paper. <laughs> Move to adjourn. Second. All in favor? All opposed? Really? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to vote. Make up the vote. Whatever they want.